Hello friends, welcome to my channel Q Analysis and I'm your host Prashant Kumar. Today we are going to talk about defect life cycle management. One of the most important concepts that may it be development team, may it be support team, or may it be testing team, or may it be managers, everybody in a software development team, they need to know this concept in detail. So today we are going to talk about this concept and I'll tell you in a brief way, how exactly can you do the defect management and what are the different stages and what are the best practices for defect life cycle management. So here we go. I'm, I'm picking this from a latest uh, one of the posts, which I did one week back. It is a very primitive concept. Still, software defect life cycle is something which is very important. It is one of the most important skills that you need to have, may it be developer, tester, or business analyst, or managers. And this is required not only for the requirement, but also for writing good bug reports, for finding out defects, and letting developers know what is the defect, how can it be reproduced, and then when they fix it, different stages which a defect passes on or goes through, and then finally when it is implemented successfully and rolled out to the users, business users or managers, or even your final clients, they approve the change and they mention that, yes, the bug has been fixed. So all these things are taken care as a part of your bug life cycle or defect life cycle management. So friends, this is what we are going to talk about today. I hope you can, you can see my screen. And uh, this is what is in detail, the defect life cycle management. And uh, I'll tell you, with the help of this flow chart or flow diagram, how exactly one can do that. Like, sometimes when you are a beginner, often you find it confusing and then you have to learn it just by memorizing and going through the concepts and then you identify all the steps and you keep on learning it. But then with your growing experience or with the time, when you get expertise, when you gain some experience, may it be in field of development, testing or management, then all these concepts, they automatically come to you. If, if you are a good learner, you'll learn it fast. If you're not, then maybe you'll learn it slow, but more or less you tend. But I believe if somebody is there to teach you with a real-time example, it becomes very easy for you to understand. And that is the reason I'm going to give this example to you. So in this flow ch chart, I'll start with the first thing, which is tester finds a defect. Yes. I'm, I'm coming from a tester point of view, then I'll walk you through from a developer's point of view, and finally I'll walk you through a business manager's or business analyst point of view. So first, software tester, he finds a defect while testing any of the builds or any of the requirement, and he mentions the status of the defect or bug as new. The development project manager will analyze the defect. He will see whether it is a valid defect or not. If it is valid, then, whether it is in a scope or not, are they going to fix it within the that cycle itself? If not, then it will be marked as deferred, maybe to some other release or the other version. If it is not a valid defect, it will be rejected. And if it is already raised, then it will be marked as duplicate. If all three conditions, they are not matching, it is failing, then it will be marked as to-do item, which will be done by developer. He'll start fixing the code. He'll start fixing the bug. once. He starts working on it, it will be marked as in progress, status will be in progress. And once the code is merged, then it will be known as fixed, status will be marked as fixed, and it will be merged in the build. So the build which will be received by tester, he will start retesting the code using the build. And based upon his testing, he'll identify uh, the failing or passing scenarios or any kind of issues. If everything looks okay, he'll mark it as closed, the defect will be marked as closed. Whereas if he sees or she sees any kind of issues on anything which has not been fixed or some other issue, he'll, he'll reopen the defect. If he sees any new issue which is related to this issue, then he can open a new defect or else if it is something which is mainly related to the same scenario which is failing, in that case, he'll mark it as reopen. 
and then once it is reopened it is sent back to the developer so he gets it in to do state again and then he starts working on it so again in progress code fix status equal to fix and then build is develop and test starts testing again and then market it uh, after performing the test they mark it as pass or fail with this if it is finally done they they go ahead and close it and the requirement is markers closed this is the point of view through which a software tester he manages a complete defect life cycle now let's see what is a developer's point of view or how does the developer manages software test life cycle or software bug life cycle a defect life cycle so when a tester is finding a bug this thing will not be applicable for a tester uh, for a developer in case of developer what he'll do he'll have a set of defects which are already raised maybe by users or maybe by testers which have been raised and have been provided to the development team to as a developer so as a developer he will go ahead and start analyzing maybe he can take help of a senior developers or senior managers and try to identify what are the defects whether they fall in the scope are they valid if uh, if they fall in the scope or if they have already been fixed or already been raised so all these things depending on that he will assign the status as if it is a valid defect then it will be considered for the next step if not then he will reject it if it is in a scope he will uh, move it to the other check which is like if it, ha it has been already raised by someone if not then it will be marked as deferred similarly if it, it has been already raised by somebody it will be marked as duplicate or else it will be assigned to a developer who is going to work on that defect and he is going to fix it the defect will be assigned he will start working on it in progress he will make code changes and fix it code will be merged the status will be marked as first and tester he goes ahead and takes uh, the build which is uh, having the code fix if you want to learn more about uh, this um, how exactly in continuous integration continuous development and testing they take place you can refer to my other videos i'll give you the link in my details whereas in my other videos which i have posted in past i have explained in detail how exactly continuous integration continuous development and continuous testing they work also if you're in, interested to know about devops Jenkins or different kind of methodologies which are very much prevalent in today's agile world. So feel free to watch the other videos from my channel. They, uh, I, I, I must say, it will it will help you a lot. Please feel free to go through. And in case if you have any question queries, do let me know through comments. And friends, if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please feel free to do so. And I'll help you with different kind of, and if you're interested in knowing on any of the topics, just let me know and I'll try to come up with a video on the same topic, a presentation on the same topic. So finally, we are going to talk about a software development, a software test life cycle or defect life cycle in terms of business managers overview. So what exactly will be management technique or how exactly so a business manager or business analyst is going to do in order to manage defect life cycle, right? So in case of defect life cycle, whenever you have requirements which are not fulfilled or maybe any kind of defect reported by clients, customers, or let's say the testing team, they are undertaken by business analysts. Business analysts go ahead and try to analyze whether it is a valid defect or not, if it is a critical one, what is the priority, criticality, and uh, what was the changes being done, if it is something which needs to be incorporated very fast or with a delay, is it going to impact the schedule or the main change which is going to be delivered as a part of release, is it impacting that? So depending on all this, the business analyst is going to analyze the defect. Post the defect is analyzed, he will also check whether it is a valid defect, whether it is in a scope, or whether it has already been raised. And then maybe he can ask to the development team, development team manager, to assign the defects to one of the developer who can go ahead and work on this uh, requirement or this bug or defect. Development team, they start working on it. One of the developers, a few of the developers, they start working on that issue. The code get fixed, 
and the status of, and uh, the status of defect is marked as fixed and the fixed code is then merged into the build the build is ready for the tester to test once the defect is ready to test it's not only the tester who is going to touch it even business analyst and when i was a business consultant business analyst even i used to take the major require test the major requirements right so i believe testing is a or software quality maintenance of software quality with a very high standard is not just one person's responsibility it's a team's responsibility it's a it's not an individual responsibility whereas it is the team responsibility so everybody in team may it be developer may it be software tester may it be business manager or analyst everybody has to contribute from their end in order to maintain a high quality software delivery okay friends so with this we come to the end of this presentation if in case you have any question, queries, doubts, feel free to let me know. I'll be more than happy to help you. And uh, this is your host, Prashant Kumar. Thanks for getting in touch. And friends, I recently got uh, nominated as uh, Global Goodwill Ambassador for Germany, which is a uh, very good news, which I wanted to share with you all. Feel free, enjoy, and get in touch with me. Do share your comments, likes, or whatever you want to share with me. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Okay, friends. Bye-bye. See ya. Have a good day.